Hey people, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. So, uh, I thought first to run through the physics that uh, needs to be explained that it is properly understood. What is really going on in biology as far as the mathematics and the enrichment of atoms. How it really is in, in real physics, you know. So, got this board, plan to get a bigger one, but this is what I got so far. So, so this is uh, the elements that I thought to point out, carbon atoms, which are just carbon atoms, but they are, they are all different in size, different in energy, and the difference in energy is what gives life and uh, what uh, gives longer life and everything to human beings. So these are the atoms that human beings are made out of, basically. Which are, as far as carbon atoms are concerned, there are others, of course. But these are the atoms that grow old and cause old age and death and so on. Everybody knows that, that that's carbon atoms. That's skin, meat, muscle, uh, organs, and brain. That's these atoms right here. And that is basically what grows old and uh, causes people to die in the first place. Uh, simply put, because the carbon atoms do not have enough energy to sustain the human life longer. But through this physics, uh, they will. So, so the first, uh, what I wanted to point, what I thought to point out, the first would be the ground, which is like element zero which is earth, that's like the ground, that's the ground, that, that's carbon atoms that are dark and so on, that's the ground. So the first thing that's made out of them, which would be element number one, which is the least enriched, would be weed, that would be number one, that's grass, weed, cows eat weed, it turns into milk, then we drink it, many of us, many children, today around the world, their bodies are made actually out of this least enriched atom, but the cow enriches it, turns it into milk, and then it is a lot better. So, but most of us were actually made out of this probably element of carbon, which is weed that uh, the cow eats and then turns into milk. And we've been drinking milk all our life, probably. And when we were kids, and that's our body, what's made out of, basically. Uh, so that would be number one. Number two would be the flowers. Now, uh, uh, the weeds make the flowers, of course. They're all made out of water and earth. Everybody knows that. So the next would be flowers and the... The bees take the flower and turn it, through them it is turned into honey. Honey is a very rich fat atom that is very very good for the whole process of making food. But it is also, it is also, but it is made out of flowers as everybody knows. Bees pick up uh, pollen and uh, atoms from the flower and they turn it into honey. Once that's like this right here, that's the, in a candle, that's also stuff that comes from honey as well. Uh, bees take those, uh, let's say, uh, atoms that are of flowers and they put them in a place where they become enriched and they become enriched very, very much and very, very strong and, and are very good for making plants and everything. But uh, how that happens is actually the atoms are there and they swell up basically like they blow up like balloons. They get bigger and bigger and bigger and therefore they have more and more and more energy in them. So that would be that. The next one I thought to point out, although honey is a lot stronger and better, is wood. Now wood is basically carbon atoms, that is the ground but that are attached to hydrogen. The, from water, the plant takes uh, uh, hydrogen from water, oxygen it releases into the air, and that's how wood is made. And when we burn wood, 
uh, that's the hydrogen, right? They are entangled, thousands, millions, billions of hydrogen atoms entangled to carbon atoms that are the Earth. And the ash we are left with, that's the Earth. All the fire that goes into energy from wood, that's the hydrogen from the water, simply put. So that's carbon through hydrogen, what, uh, what wood is actually. And what I did very interesting that I pointed out in other videos, I entangled graphene to hydrogen and made those new molecules that are, that are wood made, of, made out of graphene and everything, which is a lot stronger and everything. But uh, uh, as same as uh, carbon, the graphene does not burn and remains. Uh, remain graphene even after burning and everything. Graphene, that's the lead of a pencil. This is just graphene with, uh, with some clay in it and that's the pencil. But the reason why graphene, I'm pointing out to everyone that it is like the miracle thing is because it is 100% uh, dark matter. Okay, I call it dark matter simply to keep check all the atoms in, on Earth and everything, which are dark, which are hot, and which are invisible. So those are the three types of atoms that exist. So that's just to keep in check that I know uh, what's inside the neutrons and the protons, which is, which is the very important thing even in, in this physics. So graphene has a lot more dark matter in it than Earth and carbon, that is the Earth, and then us as well. Uh, people know our skin, human skin, can also burn, but it also turns into ash. So our carbon atoms of skin, let's say, they have some photons in them and some heat and fire in them, which probably comes from the whole process of hydrogen and making of the, of the whole, the whole uh, biology, how it is designed to work and everything. But graphene is the atom that I have discovered uh, in my physics, I call it dark matter, people can call it just graphene, it doesn't matter. Uh, I call it dark matter simply because it, it is dark and does not turn into light, so simply, simply put. Uh, graphene is the atom that can give people to be young, uh, more than any other atom I know of on Earth. So, so graphene, that's the, the pencil, what's in the pencil and everything. Because uh, in the quantum realm, in the neutrons and protons, it is 100% that dark matter. It has no light in it whatsoever. But graphene, like I pointed out in my plants and everything, I'm gonna enrich it 10 times, 20 times, 30, 40, 50 times in the future, therefore that it has that dark energy a lot, a lot more in it. These creams I have already tested on my skin and everything once and uh, uh, the creams that I made with graphene in them and they already work on the skin. So that's even evidence. I can show people evidence any time of that, it's no problem. Uh, so the next, uh, what I put, uh, the next carbon atom on the element table of elements, uh, which is like a short explanation of these elements, uh, the next one is I forgot. <laughs> I forgot what I got on this one. That's... No, the fruit, sorry. That's the fruit. So it goes weed, flower, wood, and fruit. Fruit is number four because it is the most enriched. So the wood, the flowers, the, the weeds, they all basically make the fruit. And the fruit is the most enriched atom, a carbon atom and other molecules in it and vitamins and everything. But we're talking about carbon atoms now. Uh, fruit is the most enriched. So it goes step by step, which is more energy in it and more enriched. So that's the fruit. 
But through the videos, people can see we can enrich fruit 10 times more, 20, 30, 40 times more. If it's made out of honey, honey is very, very enriched. Then the fruit will be a lot, a lot better than if it is made from these two, which naturally, basically, it is. These two are the lowest enriched carbon atom. But if we take honey, which is more enriched, probably it's somewhere here. It's somewhere here, where is milk and everything, so. But the fruit is the next step. Now number five is animals eat the fruit. Everybody knows that in nature, in jungles and everywhere, fruit and weeds and the flowers is what animals eat. And number five is M, which is meat, carbon atoms, that meat is made out of, which is made from weeds and from fruit. So that's the first meat on the table of elements. That would be explained as the least uh, good meat for people to eat. Uh, the next meat is made through meat. So that is animals that eat animals, basically. So, and milk, which is highly enriched. So the next one is meat made through meat, which end through milk. Most animals uh, uh, in uh, nature and in farms, they drink milk. And then that's what the meat of them is made out of. And then that's what we eat, which is the important part. Then number seven is the element uh, meat made from meat, which is actually animals that just eat other animals. They do not eat plants or anything like that. So their meat is even better. That's more eels, that's sharks, that's uh, bears, wolves, snakes, and so on. Snakes, let's say, they don't eat any, any sort of uh, uh, flowers or weeds or things like that. <coughs> so uh, that would be number seven. So that is more enriched than this one, more enriched than this one, and so on. But there are loopholes, you know, uh, let's say bears. Bears are a predator that eats meat, mostly. But it also eats honey. It also drinks milk when it's a baby. It also eats some bears, some special type of roots of plants. They do not like plants, but they eat roots. But the roots are tighter and stronger uh, atoms than the weeds on top. So, basically, uh, some people, Aborigines or some, uh, they have some old teaching uh, to eat some special type of roots all the time or something. And some of them live up to 100 and Thirty and something, and they didn't even know why, probably, but that's like the obvious explanation. They ate some special roots of some special plants, and they lived very, very long and everything. But those roots just gave them energy, and they lived longer. Is the simple explanation. And then on the on the top, I put number eight, which is meat made from the most enriched meat, and that is the top predator top predators in nature. So that would be like a polar bear uh, on the Antarctic, that would be the Greenland shark, and so on, which are animals that just eat the highest enriched meats out there, which is in the sea probably. The polar bear and the Greenland shark, they just eat uh, fish and the seals and so on. Seals only eat fish. Therefore, uh, the polar bear in the Antarctic is very, very highly enriched atoms and we're lucky to still have them because it's a huge physics to figure out this type of physics on their meat, but they should be still protected. There is very few of them, of course. And they, the polar bears, when they see there is no food for them, they even eat their young, you know. And some people think that's not nice and uh, like uh, wild in nature. But the reason why a polar bear eats its young because sort of it senses the young bears are gonna die anyway. And the point of the polar bear doing that is to preserve his race, like for a thousand years in the future. And to preserve basically from a physicist's point of view, then the physics of that 
carbon atoms of polar bears are preserved that enrichment and everything, which is basically saving the human race in a little part uh, that we have better and more enriched food and everything. Many people say, ah, oh, polar bears, they eat their young, why do they do that? <laughs> but there is sort of a hidden, a hidden reason for that, and perhaps it is that that the science and the physics and the biology is saved and preserved and that we have a better food in the future as the human race, basically one would say. So this is a short explanation I thought to do. I will do this 100 carbon atoms, all of them, their uh, energy, their density of neutrons and protons, their heaviness, you know. Let's say honey that I pointed out, honey is like a blow it up atom, but when it is a flower, it is a very little, little atom. So just energy flies into it, the atom swells up, and that's basically what's going on. <coughs> so, therefore people can understand the enrichment of atoms and what that really means. That's what's done in nuclear physics. Uh, uh, uranium is enriched and people get the big bomb, you know, boom. Well, that's the only reason. That's top secret, of course, I'm not going to go into that. But uh, the big realization is that we too were made uh, this through nuclear physics in secret in the quantum realm. When uh, people are babies, that's how we too are made. And tons of evidence uh, supports that and really, really show, explains that and proves that. 100% for sure proves that. So what I put here in the end is honey through H2O. Uh, because from, let's say, all the way up to here, honey is the best atom for making plants. One can make them out of meats, but that's sort of going into some, some higher, higher thing. Uh, and yeah, that's possible too. You people know in a forest an animal dies, its carcass is in the ground, uh, rots away for years, rain falls, picks up a few of those atoms, carries them into the tree. So that too can be done with animals, but probably it's uh, very expensive and not really that much. And animals we really need to eat, of course. Uh, and what I would point out here as well is, this is the healthiest atom for people to eat, which is meat of top predators, and it is the best for children to grow up on, which will give them long life and give them to be young longer and every tight skin, tight body, uh, because these atoms are the tightest and strongest, which is of top predators. Uh, alligators in uh, Australia are very, very good as well. Uh, and they can be bred, they breed fast and eat and everything, and they eat whatever you give them, any type of meat. And uh, their egg, let's say an alligator egg, is so, so strong, so enriched and so big, huge, that in, the, in Australia is very, very healthy and everything. But we people, we eat chicken eggs, made out of, let's say, this stuff or this stuff. That's like the lowest, uh, the lowest, dumbest thing, you know, when you observe from a health point of view and everything. So here I pointed out for the plants, which is honey through H2O. And I have an example here to show, because I realized uh, this makes plants grow the fastest. So this is honey and water. And let's say a person doesn't want to blend a lot, doesn't want to do this, doesn't want to do that. Then 20% uh, water, because when it's, uh, when it's turned into a liquid, it is a lot bigger, and 80% water is quite enough to make a big plant, fast plant, enriched plant, and everything, which is like a simple and simple and easy explanation uh, to show, so, which is number one. Uh, so. So this is like a, just a short version I thought to show. I will write down all the carbon atoms that I know of in nature, let's say a hundred, and a whole table of elements of them, 
which will explain their size, their energy density, and the amount of energy that they have. And then this physics will be really, really mathematically and through physics understood uh, very, very well, and so on. <coughs> so, also what I wanted to show is the is the liquid so this is the honey people can see from up close honey and water 20 30 percent honey 70 percent water water the plant with that and they grow fast fast because honey is a very rich and very big atom better than even the fruits uh, most likely so what i have here is what i showed earlier which is a root that grows underground sort of like a carrot and people can see the liquid right there. Okay. So now people, that's just it and water, nothing else in it. So here people can also see how rich it is with energy. All this, uh, all this red color is, is energy in the carbon atoms and combined with water. So uh, through this color, how thick it is, uh, one can tell how much energy is in the atoms and that's what gives health, long life and everything. So, this is like our carrot that, like a red carrot that grows on the ground, uh, not that special, uh, and so on. So, and next uh, I'm doing creams, I thought to point out. Uh, this is this is one that I that I made from the plants I make. Now I got this this I got this uh, uh, which is very interesting that I thought of putting the plant in the greens next. Uh, uh, I'm making one uh, for an older person, so I thought to make a very good one to show very good results and everything. And these, uh, these have a lot of oil in them. Now, oil is not really that good for long life and good looks because uh, to be inside the body, because oil is fire. Oil burns and it's not even good for the plants. I watered one plant with uh, olive oil because I wanted to make very dense wood, which is very, which burns a lot. I thought to do that with one plant, but that's maybe better for to do with trees, not with plants. But the plant died. I put didn't die, but most of the leaves went dry and uh, and yellow. But obviously they will go dry because uh, oil is hot matter burns, so of course it's gonna go dry and die. So I stopped on it. But most of the leaves, they turn yellow. And obviously, uh, it is hot. Uh, oil is hot, so inside the plant, it, uh, in the quantum realm, it generates heat in the quantum realm. And then the water doesn't really work well there, and the plant goes dry. But trees do that a lot better. Trees are, uh, trees are basically hydrogen, most of them, and everything. Plants that are young, they can't really cope with that. So this is what I got to put in the creams next, one of my ideas. Uh, this is what the, uh, some like Nivea firms do. They use oil from this type of food and they turn it into cream. This uh, oil in, this, uh, in these, uh, it uh, makes the skin tight. So to look younger, tight, like squeezes the skin and everything. So to be applied over the skin is not that bad and everything. So this is one of the this is one of the creams I made. So I thought to show people. So that's all it is. It is the plants inside the cream. Uh, it is greenish, and then it is applied to the skin, and they work. So these are enriched atoms. Some atoms in here are five times enriched plant atoms. But these are not for that pur purpose made. This is just the test that I did and everything. Uh, some of these are like uh, five times enriched. Some are from different plants and everything. But that was me testing that. I have honey here to prove my point. 
Now people can see honey is not really a liquid. It is a liquid, but it can barely, but it barely moves. So why does it move so slow? Uh, because the atoms are very thick and sticking to each other. So honey has some sort of like glue that uh, makes the atoms stick together, but that also means that they exchange energy very, very quickly and everything. So, but whenever people do that and it, it's not that runny, it's, it runs slowly, that means the atoms are full of energy, uh, thick fat and they are good and everything. So that would be an easy explanation of that. And I always use honey that's from flowers. There are those from trees and everything, but from the flowers and the fields that are natural, I think are better and everything. But depends on the tree. From some trees it could be good as well. Because the trees are fruit, but so is the flower in some sense. So, <clears throat> so now I'll explain the tree that I'm making, especially for the creams that I talked about. This is a this is one plant that is basically made out of honey, honey and water. Maybe 20% of it is made out of honey and water, 15% uh, and so on, since I started watering as a big plant. And this plant grows faster, let's say 40% faster than the other ones, because it is mainly uh, liquid honey and water that it was watered with. That's the one that I use for dumping ground. But uh, that dumping, things that I dumped, was basically honey and water. And then I figured out that that's actually one of the best combinations that works out well and everything. <coughs> so this plant I'm planning to turn into, uh, let's say, this type of cream. This cream, uh, I'm gonna create like one like this, but thousand times better and that has, let's say, 50 times more energy in it than when it is applied to the skin than this stuff that Niva uses because this is probably two from some plants, some animals and so on just atoms sticking together, maybe milk and not going to reveal, uh, you know, go into the details that's probably some of their secret stuff but this plant I'm going to make especially just to make a cream like this which nourishes the skin and enriches it but 50 times more, 40 times more than this stuff and, and how to do that is not really that hard uh, uh, one just needs an atom that has that much energy more in it than, than, than these atoms in this Nivea thing so, from a physics point of view, it's actually very, very simple. I made ones, I made ones from atoms already that are five times enriched, but uh, here I will try to make a, a special plant just for that. So honey will go into it to make it stick, uh, that it doesn't run away, sort of. When a cream is applied, uh, one needs sort of something like honey so that it sticks to the skin. It doesn't just evaporate into the air and everything. I also pointed out the graphene atoms, and some graphene atoms uh, are going to go into this tree and fruit as well for that, which will be specially enriched just to be best for making the creams of the skin and everything. Uh, like I pointed out, because this is not for eating, this will be just for, for that purpose, so I can put in anything I want into it, basically. So a percentage of this plant will be honey, will be, will be the oil from these, from these that I showed just earlier. Uh, graphene will be also a big part of this plant, and I plan it to go all the way up, three meters big and everything. And uh, and uh, this plant is also growing very, very fast where I realized honey and water is a good combination. Fast combination, easy combination, and, uh, and one just pours it. Uh, honey is already broken up into atoms. Let's say honey, the same thing is cow manure. Uh, one can see here 
cow manure is this same stuff uh, because it is broken apart into atoms and it just chemically sticks together. The, the digestive system breaks food apart into atoms. So what goes into our blood, what goes into our blood is always atoms. See, if we could get something bigger, let's say a uh, hundred atoms into the blood, that would give energy a hundred times more, but in a different process. But the blood doesn't work like that. If there are, let's say, a billion atoms sticking together inside the human body, that's cancer then. And that's how cancer is made. Uh, let's say a billion of some dirty atoms, they decide for some chemical reason uh, or temperature reason inside the human body to stick together, that depends on which atoms they are, well, that's all cancer is. That's how people get cancer. Cancer is just a way, let's say, a billion atoms that for some chemical reason and for some reason of temperature, they stick together and form a piece of matter. And that's how cancer is created in the, in the, in the human body. Simple as that, nothing, uh, but the reason why the blood has that, has that in it is because the blood of the human body grows when a person is a child. So it has to have that ability to make atoms stick together because that's how a person grows up in the first place and everything. So to go into this chemistry uh, through real physics and understand it properly is like a huge, huge thing. This, let's say, what I pointed out, uh, I can show people the one with graphene as well. Uh, this is the one I've been using. I'll show people that as well. This is the one with graphene in it. Okay. Uh, <coughs> that's the big, uh, the big thing. This is the, the one with graphene in it. Uh, people can see it's dark. I'll move up close. It's, that's the green one and that's the graphene one. The, the graphene one is uh, broken apart graphene atoms inside the special cream and then it is applied to the skin and it works perfect. Graphene works perfect. It is my, it is my uh, discovery in my physics and one of the patents I'm working on and it's going very, very well. Makes the skin look young and everything. But enriched future graphene atoms will be uh, uh, 50 times better and everything, so... <clears throat> so, I'm just gonna remove that because <coughs> I'm not sure can one inhale graphene yet, you know, when it is in that state. Uh, when I make the graphene uh, cream, uh, the graphene turns into a, a, like a evaporation. It goes into the air, just like, let's say, smoke, carbon monoxide, or any of those things, because it is a carbon atom. So when I make it, I have to uh, mix it with water, mix it with many things, so to make sure that it goes into the cream and not just evaporates. So, so this plant is also, let's say, a billion dollar billion dollar enterprise like that easily. This plan, I'm planning to make uh, the best cream possible out of it. Then I might add even more things uh, to it as well and so on. But people can see right here that honey turns into green, into the green of the plant very, very easily. And the plant is growing faster and better than even the other ones. So I realized that Honey is actually better and thicker, bigger atom than even some of the fruits uh, that I put into the plants and everything. But the fruits are better maybe for different purposes and everything. But this is like an explanation of that. So this plant I'm going to make special just for the cream. And then these leaves and the fruit it gives, uh, let's say in three months, I'll just chop them up and put them all into the cream special way and then apply it to the skin and it is supposed to return that a person looks young 
let's say in a month, uh, you know, a person might go from looking 50 years old to looking 25 years old. In one month, that is the goal of the physics and a very likely easy, easy thing to do once this physics is understood and everything. So this is the plan for that and in the future videos people will see also how it grows and everything. I will perhaps add two of them just for the creams to do as well and so on. <coughs> now I mentioned in earlier videos, I mentioned like uh, how to make burgers and things and everything. I mentioned just one, how to make burger sauces, you know. There is ketchup, there is mayo, there is uh, uh, spices, there is all types of things in it. But the mayo, as I figured it, is still the most enriched atom in the sauce for a burger sauce. And when a person uh, tastes it, he tastes uh, mayo most of all in the sauce more than all the other things, depending on the amount, if it's an equal amount, of course. And that is, in physics, very, very simple. That is because mayo is made out of eggs, and eggs are very, very uh, bigger and uh, more uh, energy, more enriched atoms than the other spices that are put in the sauce. More than ketchup, more than oils, more than spices and everything. And that is, so, uh, in the future, let's say, to make the best burger, uh, well, one would really understand and know nuclear physics, and through nuclear physics, he'll make a best burger easy as pie, as people would say, so to speak. And, uh, and uh, that's the beauty of this physics that goes into that, because this that I explained, this that I explained, this I just explained nature, biology. But all these atoms right here is all the food we eat, as far as the carbon atoms are concerned. So when, and there is hundreds of them even. And then when there is food, let's say one takes meat, this is cow, no, this is cow. Cow eats weeds and, uh, and uh, milk, uh, eats weeds and drinks milk and that's how it is created. That's beef, that's a hamburger right there. But, uh, and that's uh, the meat we eat all the time. But through this physics, once we enrich that meat, that beef will be a lot healthier, a lot tastier, a lot better. And for like a hundred different purposes, for a steak, for a burger, for a special, then meats can be made, special ones for hamburgers, special ones for steaks, special ones for for barbecue ribs, uh, for all kinds of purposes. And through this physics, then very easily that will be understood and everything. Because the energy equivalent in the atoms of meat is also the taste that we taste. Because let's say this meat, number five, well, that's chicken as well. And why is chicken chicken? And why is pork, uh, why is... Uh, uh, why is uh, cow meat cow meat and why is chicken chicken? And that is the gene of the animal. But it is made basically from the same things. People give them what? This stuff, that's wheat. And then meat of a chicken and meat of a cow as far as health uh, reasons and long life is basically the same stuff, just uh, squeezed into an atom uh, in a different type of energy. So, and that's the difference between chicken and, uh, and beef. It is the same stuff, but it is just differently arranged to give a different taste, you know. So that would be the simple explanation. But let's say we make a cow out of, out of some enriched grass. We make grass, let's say, out of honey and milk milk and honey, and then we give that to the cow, and then she makes the meat, then we got, then we got some, then we get milk from a cow that's very, very highly enriched and better, and the meat from a cow that's highly enriched and better, and better taste, 
bigger atom changes taste changes and that just that one example changes hamburgers changes steaks a steak would not be that big it would be that big then in the future and tastier the atoms would be full of energy of milk and honey in them so of course it would be something beautiful uh, even in taste and everything okay so so the cream with graphene I showed people is like a cream and I added graphene atoms to it you know I break graphene atoms apart uh, that's a little bit tough because they evaporate into the air people can inhale them and uh, Maybe they would cause cancer. They are good to be in the body When they are enriched as food and they are good to be on the skin But the lungs are sort of they could cause they probably won't but I'll just point it out Maybe it'll cause cancer lung cancer. So that's like one difficulty there, but uh, I just don't inhale it when I make it. I make it in water, I break graphene atoms apart, uh, and I make a thick water with it, then I put cream that's supposed to absorb the, all the graphene atoms, and then I just apply it to the skin. So that's a fast explanation that turns people looking young, maybe in a month or two, if they all the time apply that. Just uh, the problem is parts of the cream, they go evaporate into the air, people might inhale them, and that might cause cancer, so I should point that out just so people know. That's like my patent invention that I did work is working very well and fast. And through my physics, that's like very simple, you know. Uh, that graphene cream I figured out in like five minutes. Before I thought to make a special blood and milk, enriched milk and blood, and then to turn the outside of the skin as if it is inside the body and that's what I thought to do with creams and everything but then I realized graphene will do that 10 times better and faster very very easily so that's like one thing I'm working on and it's working out very very well uh, people can see like there people can tell the difference like these pores right here are a lot bigger and here than these because on this uh, on this uh, hand I applied it like 10 times more for hours and hours so it's already working out this hand is sort of wider and younger than this one but that's just evidence so that's what I explained about the plant and uh, this plant and I'll probably get a few more of them just for this purpose I will make specially, there's a lot of special parts that are going to go into it, some is honey and things that will make the plant uh, give biological atoms that fill the skin with energy very very fast. The only thing going on there is, in physics is the more energy goes into the skin, which is that dark energy as I call it, the younger the skin is. So in physics, when one understands it, a person can turn his skin younger than even when he was a baby. Even that is some huge, huge possibility, you know. And one explanation of that is nuclear physics. And that is humanity, how far they got in understanding that physics. Just they do not understand that, uh, that all atoms can be filled with energy and can lose energy. Yeah, so, but enrichment of uranium would be like a, like one example of that. That is, of course, some totally different energy. It is energy that blows up, uh, which is the fire one sees. Uh, uh, I have written, uh, <coughs> which is the fire one sees when the explosion blows up. That's just how much energy it has in there. That's how much fire it gets, therefore. I know about nuclear physics have written... Uh, that big equation, like 10 of them, better, I think better than any nuclear physicist on Earth. Uh, I think they do not know more about nuclear physics than me. No, not the Chinese, the Russians, the Americans, I think, no way, but that's my opinion, you know. But that's not even something I work on, that's just something I wrote about, you know, and everything. So one thing I have come to notice uh, in the work, I have watered the plant with oil, 
with oil and it does not, it did not go well. I put olive oil into one pan and this whole part would turn yellow and uh, and the dye not be, not be so good and uh, it would not die but it turned yellow and that's because there is too much fire and heat in the hydrogen atoms that are in oil and in the oils and then when it goes into the plant it's too hot in the quantum realm and that's why leaves turn turn uh, uh, green turn turn uh, yellow and not work so well simply because the water cannot go into the oil you know water and oil don't mix so it's not very good oil is good for other purposes but not really for the for the for the making of plants <coughs> and uh, I mentioned diseases you know, uh, I did that off bat, simply mentioned it, but I didn't really explain it. And there is no concern about that. I mentioned that in earlier videos. Uh, diseases cannot happen. Uh, people eat proteins all the time. Proteins go into the muscles and everything. But a different type of protein that is a different type of energy could sort of be something new. But uh, there one can understand that's another billion dollar enterprise too, in which proteins can make that all people are like Arnold Schwarzenegger, like that very easily, even without working out. You know, so there is another million billion dollar enterprise uh, like uh, very good, like very good these things. This is what I get when I go, when I work out, I box and work out. Uh, in the gym and everything. So to make this whey protein enriched, uh, people would be so strong and have muscles so strong that that uh, that would be very very powerful. But even for that, I would need a special plant just to do that, to make that specially for people. But when proteins in some animals that have some chemistry in their blood. Like I mentioned about cancer earlier, uh, some proteins entangle because of some temperature and some chemistry, which is even unknown, let's say in a chimpanzee or something, or some animal, because all the blood of animals is different, each and every one, even each and every individual has a different type of blood in the same species as well. So in some animal, proteins, and that's what turns into a virus. So I simply thought to mention that, so when people do the whole plant thing, uh, just don't put something with high concentration of protein in them, and that's that. I mean, many plants make proteins, and many plants have proteins in them. Uh, many fruits and seeds have protein in them, some very, very high amounts. So plants do that very well, <coughs> and in the plant, nothing is going to happen. But once those proteins go into certain types of bloods, then the high, high, uh, complex quantum realm chemistry that one needs to know, you know, takes place and everything. But to the plant, nothing can happen. Plants have proteins in them already, you know. Uh, like chia seeds, for instance, are a high, high concentration of protein and everything. <clears throat> Yeah, and I mentioned the deserts and deserts and cold places. That's something very interesting to. That's something very interesting to think about. I mentioned the deserts and I mentioned the uh, uh, cold places. So let's say Canada, a cold place. Russia, Norway, north of Europe. Uh, what do people make plants out? And during the winter, uh, people can make a plant like this in a forest in Norway, in Canada, in Russia, and it would grow. Just the question then is, out of what would they make it? Uh, in my physics, I could figure it out, I could put a plant like this in a cave, underground, 100 meters, and I, I think I could make it grow and give fruit. It does not need any sunlight or anything. 
plus temperature can be changed if a person has an enclosed space when well, he chooses the, any temperature he wants for the plant so, so, so let's say in Canada uh, people want to make a plant during the winter well then oil that I mentioned would actually be a good thing to put inside the plant because oil is what keeps the plant hot in the quantum realm so even if it is cold outside in the, in the quantum realm, in the plant it is very hot and it can grow up easily. So uh, hydrogen would be one simple explanation. Let's say there is a tomato right here and it's growing in Canada. So you would just take a patch, uh, let's, let's say a patch of something that absorbs water and you put a lot of hydrogen into that like paper and patch and you put it over the tomato and then the tomato will grow and have the temperature it needs even if it's outside so that's like a very simple easy explanation uh, the plant and the tomato the fruit will be hot even if it's very very cold outside one would just cover over it with hydrogen or some other matter that is very very hot so that's something i planned to do even here well let's say when these tomatoes grow up I'm going to take liquid nitrogen and nitrogen that is used in cooking, you know, that cooks you. That's not really that too cold, like minus maybe 200 and something, but I'll use a very small amount of it and nitrogen. And I'll put a patch like that over the tomatoes during the summer and then they will have the cold temperature they need and then they will grow. Also, I can water the plant then with nitrogen a little bit just so that it has nitrogen inside in the quantum realm because for the fruit, nitrogen is very, very good. But for the plant, it's not. The plant is hot matter, the fruit is cold matter. So nitrogen is cold and it's good for the fruit but it would mess up the plant if it goes through it. So let's say people do this in a desert, want to make a plant like this. In Egypt, in California, Nevada, and so on, it is really, really possible. So, and the way to do that, let's say in a desert, let's say near Las Vegas, outside of Las Vegas, you take a plant and you make it out of metal. Let's say you take some mercury, you take some graphene and you take some nitrogen and that's what you water this plant with. And then you add honey and some amount that is good and healthy for the plant. Let's say 50-50, so to speak. And then that's what you make a plant out of in a vertical farm in the desert. <laughs> and then the physics is saying this plant can grow up in a desert just like that. Because in the quantum realm, in the quantum realm, graphene is extremely cold. Graphene even expands when it's hot and it, no, it expands when it's cold, but it shrinks when it's hot because it is cold matter. So cold matter makes it bigger and bigger. Heat makes it stick together. So, uh, but graphene remains graphene even in, in when it's very, very hot. So this, if it's made out of graphene, nitrogen, and let's say mercury, if it works out, I haven't tried mercury, but it's an idea, uh, well then this will grow up in a desert just like that, because uh, its quantum realm temperature inside the plant will be cold still, even if it's in a desert, and it will grow up big and nice. You can plant a whole forest like that around Las Vegas or something. For instance, it's an idea, but probably correct and everything. <coughs> I have not tried that yet, but the physics says that is very easily correct and everything. But then when the fruit comes in Nevada, then you put a patch over it that has a liquid nitrogen in it. So that would be like something that absorbs a liquid and you just put it over the tomato. And heat cannot go through that patch full of liquid nitrogen which is like something that absorbs the liquid and you just put it over the tomato the tomato is growing nicely and coldly you have to know the right temperature that is the best for it according to the surrounding heat of the desert and you got a plant growing in the desert like that 
yes, it's a little bit more complex and more money, but it, this physics would really give uh, people that that uh, that in deserts they can plant any type of plant, you know. But here I have talked to some friends and they, uh, like friends about plants and everything. And they're like, oh, if we could make bananas here, here in the, in the Balkans, bananas cannot be cannot grow, coffee cannot grow. But to, I mean, uh, to me, that's like the simplest thing ever to me. When you know this quantum realm physics, it's not that easy. But when you know this physics, it's even very, very simple. <laughs> you just need the ground, what's in the ground, where the coffee or bananas grow, they grow well. They grow well uh, uh, in some hot places is where bananas grow well. So you just need what potassium, let's say, that's in the ground. You need more of that soil that's sort of like a sand and you just put that all in the ground, then you just take bananas, you whisk them, and you water the plants with that. And then the plant will have that energy that it needs a million times more than even those banana farms do. So, I think I can make a banana plant uh, on the South Pole if I want it. <laughs> you know, when you know physics, uh, it, okay, but I mean anywhere in Europe, make a banana plant, make a coffee plant, that would even be simple, easy stuff to do. But people can understand through this physics, let's say it's a banana plant. Well, in a banana is all the energy it needs, because that's where the plant sends all the energy. So you just take the bananas with them, and you water it, and bananas will grow anywhere you like. Coffee as well will grow anywhere you like. You just make some coffee and pour it to the roots, and it's that simple. <laughs> you know, so it's a great big revolution, the whole physics of it, and the beautiful thing that can really, really make uh, a more better, a world of really a better place, and and very very great physics that is interesting to know and to learn and everything. <clears throat> So this is the land I use. I didn't show that really. This is the land I use. It doesn't have any fertilizers in them, nothing whatsoever. This is German land, which is very dark and very good. It has wood in it, it has metals in it, which are just for the roots. The metals are just for the roots. They're not supposed to go into the fruit to be eaten, because those metals are bigger metals that are just for the roots to help them out and it has minerals in it so that is so thought to show that this is really the land i use uh, from germany it has wood in it but it would uh, but it's in big pieces so you know very good land i think and very very good for the plants but even the germans don't know that that they should just take those pieces of wood with them in a blender and that's what they should put in the land and then the fertilizer will be thousand times better because it will give uh, those atoms of wood to the plant thousand times more when the wood is broken apart into little into little into individual atoms i mean so that could help out the germans let's say who make this uh who make this minerals are already broken down into minerals uh, people in, let's say, a cactus, I have a cactus right here, uh, there is some rock there, and in some vertical farms, some greens farms, they use rock. Uh, that also I would point out. And the only thing that the water does is picks up minerals and parts of the rock and carries them into the, into the plant. So, all you need is uh, mineral water, you pour it in, and that's really that, then you don't even need the rocks. Plus the mineral water is highly enriched more with minerals than the little itty bitty atoms. Water picks up, you know, few at a few at a time from the rocks anyways. And then uh, this gives you like a beautiful physics that you know every atom, every mineral, everything of the whole plant. And so you are basically engineering the plant. 
You are thinking it up atom by atom, mineral by mineral, molecule by molecule, <coughs> which is very, very, which is very, very beautiful even in physics when you observe it from a nuclear physics point of view, because this as well is enriched atoms. And how enriched they are is how enriched the fruit they're going to get. So, so uh, to observe biology in nature, it is actually like observing a quantum realm factory. Therefore, it is actually a quantum realm factory. Uh, once a tomato is here, uh, it is green. People know that. Or a chili or another fruit, fruit or vegetable. It is first of all green, then it turns into the color when it's ready to eat. And why is that? Because the atoms are just not yet filled with energy. Once they are filled with energy, they change color. And then people know it's ready to eat and that's that. So, but if you make a plant that has a hundred times more energy, ten times more energy, 20 times more energy, well then the fruit will also have that much more energy in it. Number one. Number two, it will be ready to eat a lot faster. And number three, it might even give different colors. <coughs> Let's say the fruit of this, if it's supposed to be red, well if I made it out of honey, then it's probably going to be red, but sort of going toward the greenish even when it's ready. Because people know uh, there is uh, hundreds of different colors of fruit and vegetables. And that is simply because of the equivalent of energy in the atoms. And that's the only reason. So once a person changes the equivalent, the equivalent of energy in a plant, he will also change the equivalent of energy in a, in a tomato, in a chili, in a something as well. So it will give even new flavors and new colors and a lot healthier food is the explanation. So I explained the creams and that's uh, the same thing as what the creams are doing. Uh, the cream goes over the skin and fills the skin with energy. That's the same thing the plant does to, uh, to a tomato or a chili. It is there green and then the plant is filling it with energy and when it's full it turns red and it's ready to eat. And that's the whole process. So the cream one would put over skin to look young is doing the same exact thing. So there people can see in physics how those are two very, very, uh, very, very similar same things basically. So what I'm planning with this plant is it's going to have a lot of things in it, a lot of things in it. But one is going to be the seeds I showed uh, and the honey. That's going to be one thing. Another idea I have about it is, uh, let's say, sperm. Uh, people, uh, people throw away tons of tons of sperm into the sewer every day. But sperm is actually highly enriched at it. Uh, animal sperm or human sperm. It is highly, highly enriched uh, atoms. Uh, sperm is actually what the human body is. A bit atoms of food go into the sperm and the sperm enriches it and that's how the baby starts to grow. A uh, human body is actually a grown-up sperm in physics if one observes it. And the sperm is what has the energy in it to enrich uh, the, the incoming carbon atoms and atoms that create the body of the baby. So one also idea about this I have is to take sperm and to whiz it, turn it into individual atoms, and then water the plant also with that. And that is something people can try out. Uh, it, is not, it is not very complex. Everybody has sperm around. People throw it away. It just goes into the, it uh, it just goes into the sewer, and it, the fish eat it in the end, in around cities and everything. 
where the sewer is going to the sea, but it, it can actually turn into something very, very huge because uh, some because of uh, <clears throat> because of the high energy that's in the that's in the that's in the atoms, you know, because it is thrown away anyway, tons and tons of sperm every day, you know, and people could see it like. Uh, People can even sell sperm once that is realized and that for these types of purposes and to be young and everything that it can be used, then people can even make profit, you know. <laughs> the more sex they have, the, the more money even they make, you know. Somebody just puts it in a bottle, says, dude, here, you know, and you sell it and that's that, you know. And that would be like hitting two birds with one stone, you know. People have sex and they make money, <laughs> it'd be like huge, you know. But, uh, but it is also a great idea about this. Let's say the fruit is being made that for the cream of the skin and then some atoms of it inside would actually be sperm. But it can also be sperm of animals, let's say. If it was shark sperm, that sperm is probably even highly more enriched than even a human sperm. Or let's say an egg or sperm of a alligator or so on, of a crocodile, sorry. So that's even more enriched atoms than, than even human sperm. Human sperm is as good as what the person eats, but it is highly enriched anyway. So, but it is made out of food that the person eats. Of course, I mean a healthy sperm that doesn't have any diseases and, and anything in it, of course. So that too is an interesting idea to point out. So that is for that is what I thought to explain today, the, the physics a little bit more thoroughly and everything. And now in the end I'll just show people the really, a little bit complex equations and physics about it. But it is very, very good in understanding this physics. It is very, very good and I'll try to explain it uh, quickly and so that it is I'll try to explain it quickly. So these are the equations right there that people can see that are that are that are that will explain this whole process easy to a physicist and to a person who knows a little bit about physics. Uh, this would be the first equation, G equals KS. So that is actually that is actually like uh, the gene of a human being, of a plant, of any animal in biology, any living thing in a biology, it equals quantum entanglement. This is just in Serbian, but I plan to do this uh, all in English, of course, but I will explain what it means. So the gene that equals quantum entanglement, that equals the how tall a person is, it equals as well uh, how his whole appearance, it equals as well uh, how tall, how short, how strong, how weak, how his whole appearance, his uh, color of eyes, the, the eye color of people is just basically how strong the atom is sticking to each other and to, uh, to itself and to the other atoms around it. So if the atom is squeezed more, then the color changes. If it is a little bit more loose, then the color is not changed. That would be the color of a, of, a, of a human being's eyes. In biology, there is thousands of different eyes and so on. So that's the gene. The gene equals quantum entanglement. Quantum entanglement in my physics, in my physics, all solid matter is quantum entangled. Skin is quantum entangled. That's why it's skin. The bone is, the brain is, the meat is, the organs are, those are all different types of quantum entanglement in the human body. This clock is metal, 
that was uh, that was uh, uh, heated up, then cooled down. When it cooled down, it the atoms were quantum entangled by by cold, and that's why they are sticking together. So, in my physics, uh, every piece of atom that is sticking to each other, that is a solid piece of matter that is quantum entangled. You know, and that helps you understand all matter a lot better than th talking about some chemical. There are some things that are chemically entangled, but that's like paper, glue, uh, and uh, maybe waste, that's honey, and so on. You know, but that's a very small amount of things that are really chemically entangled to each other. And the other equation that is very important in this physics is the atom equals light. See, so the gene is, uh, the, ge the genetics and DNA of a human being, that equals how the atoms stick to each other in physics, to simply explain it. But the atoms one uses equals how long he lives. So the atom equals life, not the gene. <coughs> gene is just uh, appearance, you know, you know. Uh, but uh, many different people eat many different foods. You know, your genes decide your appearance, but what you make your body out of is when you're a kid, what you feel like eating, you know. What you feel like eating, well, that decides how long you're gonna live, basically, you know. So the atoms you eat equals how long a person is gonna live, how long he'll be young, healthy, and so on. And that is really correct physics about it. In uh, simple ways to explain that, the atom, how much energy it has in it, that is actually how long a person is gonna live. Once that energy is spent, a person is old and dies. So that's really what the evidence says and everything about it. Because scientists and physicists, they say, oh, that's our genes, that's why we die. Well, that's not our genes. <laughs> you know, in a factory of a Ferrari, they make a car that can run a thousand years, you know. So, uh, so, but that's not because of the genes. That's because of the atoms and materials they use when they make all the metal parts. The genes of a Ferrari, that's just a pretty appearance, you know. But what makes it one of the best cars is the materials they use, you know. That would be like evidence. So the same applies to the human life. Uh, what uh, food you eat, that decides how long you're going to be young, pretty, and how long you're going to live. And that is the whole process here that we make these enriched foods that are going to that are going to give people life for a long time and everything. So, so this is one equation that I have. I thought to point out this is thermonuclear physics, but it can also explain uh, what is going on in food and atoms and what we are looking for. You know, who wants to make the enriched food and everything? So. So, so the first part is the, the, the alpha. The A right there represents alpha, which is temperature. And that is the beginning part of thermonuclear physics. Of course, that's secret. I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> and it's not even explained here. That's enrichment of uranium. Tra -la -la -la. I don't even mention that even in my books because that's even secret. Who would want to reveal that, you know, publicly? Not a very good idea, of course. But, uh, but like I said, in nuclear physics, to me, uh, nuclear physics, to me, is actually even very, very simple. I studied it for 10 years. This is one of the simple equ equations. I have ones that are even bigger. But I'll explain it so people understand. So, so the beginning alpha, that's the A right there, that's alpha, alpha means beginning, equals the temperature of matter when it is created. And I won't go into any more details because that's about how it's, uh, I mean, I don't even mention it here, but that's how it's made and everything. But that's not what these equations explain. This explains just how it works uh, when it is blown up, not how it's made. So. So the, that alpha beginning equals the density. That's how one gets the density of nuclear matter. 
since we are making food through nuclear nuclear physics, it is important to know. So, so the density of nuclear ma matter is divided by that's the line by quantum entanglement. That means uh, quantum entanglement is the force that holds the atom together and the atoms to each other, and that is divided by the atom right there. And the atom is divided by density, which equals uh, how much particles it has which is divided by how much neutrons it has. Neutrons are very important in creating thermonuclear temperature, of course, and the equivalent of energy in them and so on. That's what gives the big fire and the uh, boom when a uh, nuke goes off, you know. So times all this, times one gets the atom, which is uh, the, the matter, and that is the element of the shock wave of fire. No, that is the element of spreading of fire, which is created through density of neutrons. So that is, uh, explains the beginning part, the alpha part of thermonuclear physics. And then when all that is done, other parts I will not mention, then identical to that, one gets nuclear matter. That's NMT, nuclear matter. And identical to that, uh, to nuclear matter, is nuclear mass, which is also a very important part, even in uh, enrichment of food. Because the heavier the food is, the more energy it has in it, therefore it, more it gives life. And nuclear mass is divided by time's acceleration. Uh, that is mentioned very little here, but that also applies to all plants. Uh, acceleration of nuclear matter, when it's stationary, let's say, uh, the Earth spins 1,600 kilometers per, per hour on the equator. And then that acceleration divided by 3,085 gives you nuclear mass right there on the equator. You can know it. That's how fast mass flies into nuclear matter. And that in part decides how big the shock wave will come out when it blows up. You know, it would be the simple explanation, but of course, nuclear rockets, they move fast. So when they hit a place, they're moving a lot faster than the equator. Some rockets go 10,000 kilometers per hour and everything, but that doesn't really help out that much, you know, in creating the shock wave. It is more about the mass of the matter and everything. <laughs> but yes, it does help out a bit. So identical to that, nuclear mass and nuclear matter, one gets the shock wave. The shock wave, which is the element, that's a nuclear shock wave, which is very big. Some go around the whole planet when, let's say, some big, very big czar bomb blows up. And uh, the shock wave is the element of outgoing mass. See, Now, outgoing mass is the most beautiful uh, discovery, I think, in physics. In, in quantum realm physics and in physics, uh, people don't know about it, have never heard of it maybe, but it is so huge, so beautiful. Uh, let's say you have a flower and you smell it. You put it to your nose and smell it. Well, the outgoing mass of the flower, uh, the mass joins in the flower through all its quantum entangled bits and parts and comes out as outgoing mass. Similar happens to explosions as well. So it is all about the same thing, basically. And then the outgoing mass, when you hold a flower, carries uh, subatomic particles of that flower to your nose. That's similar to radiation. And then you smell it, you know. So that's outgoing mass right there, which is a huge, huge discovery. It can also be called, let's say, quantum gravity, you know. If you observe it from Newton's point of view, uh, it carries its uh, quantum bits. That's why it would be called quantum gravity. But it's not gravity and it's not space-time. It is just incoming mass and outgoing mass, which is like a physics-correct uh, way of seeing it. And then in nuclear physics, uh, uh, the shock wave, which starts the explosion, which is its outgoing mass, the mass joins when secret uh, parts happen and the bomb goes off. The outgoing mass comes out as a shock wave, very big, very strong, 200 meters per second, so to speak, in some bombs. And then that outgoing mass shock wave is divided by, that's the big line, temperature of the matter. 
So when uh, an explosion occurs, that's any explosion, uh, through the neutrons and how densely packed the neutrons are to each other, that decides the temperature of the explosion, you know. And that's why enrichment of uranium is really that important, because the more enriched it is, the more energy neutrons have, therefore the more temperature they have. Of course, that's secret how they do that, of course. So identical to the temperature of the explosion, that is, uh, identical to that, one gets times, means the temperature makes happen, the shock wave and the temperature make happen, the density of the atoms. And then the, the density of the atoms uh, at the point of explosion, that decides the whole thing. The temperature, the how much energy, the how big the shock wave of bomb will be, and so on. And the density of atoms is the element of, is actually the element that gives through temperature the spreading of fire through the density of neutrons, is the explanation there. Because when an explosion happens, the mass through quantum entangled parts of the atoms joins. And as soon as the mass joins through the neutrons, so does the temperature. And then violently they all go boom, you know. It's like a physics explanation. I got like the 10, 20 even bigger and more detailed explanations of nuclear physics. I found that interesting because I study uh, how to go to space and make uh, space travel technologies where explosions are very big parts about that. So, uh, bigger always than the fire, uh, this part is always bigger than the fire that follows. So, the temperature and outgoing mass are always bigger than the fire that uh, continues in the explosion. Always the shock wave goes first, then temperature follows it, and then a fire follows the temperature. But the temperature is always bigger than the fire because the fire is the equivalent of energy. So the fire, which is energy, which is equal to how much energy the, bombs ha the bomb has, the fire is always less than the temperature and the shock wave. And the fire is actually what the enrichment is all about anyway. The more fire it has, the bigger the bombs is, you know. And nuclear physicists find this thrilling to, 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 you know, do whatever with this. This is like... To me, this is like the simplest, the dumbest stuff, you know. Uh, many people believe in aliens, you know. <laughs> and what if some evil aliens come over and they'll rule the world and everything? And I was always thinking, I know so much about uh, explosions and everything. I could, if I wanted, uh, theoretically, or even really, I believe I could even make a bomb to blow up, uh, let's say, Saturn. If somebody wanted to blow up, uh, uh, let's say, a planet, I think I can make it as easy as pie, you know. But in, in theory, in thinking, I mean, of course, because I have studied it for so many years, but for space travel, not for making bombs, of course. <clears throat> But it is very simple stuff. Through my physics, if one observes explosions, that's like little baby stuff, even easy. Food is actually a lot more complex because the only thing we can put in the human body is atoms. If we put something too big, it will just clog up the blood. So we have to make individual atoms that give energy to the body. Here it's a whole bomb, you know, big, as big as you like, so then the mass joins and you get huge, huge energies, but in the human body we have to make it one atom at a time, so. So the temperature and shock wave are always bigger than the fire and energy and times that is the acceleration through temperature. So the fire and energy can only accelerate in the explosion through temperature. As soon as temperature cools down, everybody knows uh, the heat of an explosion is going through cold space. So it's cooling down as it is going and the further it spreads, the more it cools down, you know. So the energy of an explosion only goes as far as the temperature allows it. And one gets that from the density of neutrons. And then uh, one through that gets times the speed of light through the size of the photon. 
<coughs> so then when fire blows up, uh, uh, the fire is also accelerating through mass, and those are atoms and neutrons and protons, and the energy is accelerating, and uh, through that acceleration it happens the speed of light, one gets uh, the, 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 uh, the light of the explosion, and the speed of light happens through the size of the photon. You know, all outgoing masses, they carry uh, atoms, and subatomic particles and everything, but the size of the of the uh, subatomic particle itself decides the speed of it. So the speed of light is actually de is decided only by the size of the photon. And in my physics, the size of a, a photon of darkness, I call it a colderon. Uh, which is a subatomic particle of darkness is even faster than light, you know. But people probably don't believe that. They have not yet, they cannot even detect darkness because it is that small and that fast. They cannot even detect it with a, with a detector for particles, so they don't yet believe in it. But if you can see darkness, well, obviously it's particles, you know, it's not. It's not, you know, nothing or whatever, you know. So the speed of light happens through the size of the photon, which is the, the easy explanation of outgoing mass. So anything out of, outgoing masses carry, that's, that's sunlight, darkness, radiation, all planets, all moons, all stars, and everything. Uh, all the energy that comes out of matter is this, the speed of the energy is decided by the size of the photon or the size of the subatomic particle that is the energy. So that's a fast way to explain that. And then this whole thing is divided by, the explosion is divided by, divided by the omega effect. Is divided by the omega effect. The omega effect in my physics, that's the end. A sunlight has end when photons go uh, too far away from the sun. It is too cold and they stop. Uh, functioning, they are, they are not photons anymore, they just disappear and the only thing that reaches us from stars is images of them, but not really photons. Uh, the people don't know that in physics too, they don't believe it, but that is entirely correct, you know, scientists believe that a photon can reach us from like the Andromeda galaxy, you know. And even if a photon reached us, how can the picture of the entire Andromeda galaxy fit inside a photon, you know. That's like totally, totally crazy to believe to me, you know. But uh, they don't understand that outgoing mass of, let's say, suns in the Andromeda galaxy, it carries images of light, but no photons and no material matter is in there. That's just a force carrying information, I would say, in my physics. Outgoing mass of the Andromeda galaxy carries all the images of the suns in it, but no photons, no visible light, no light, you know. Would be like a correct, a very fast and correct explanation. I have many equations on that. I have the omega effect written about suns and uh, supernovas and everything, uh, many, many pages, many, many beautiful equations. That will also follow in future videos as well. And I will see in English to to write down the equation so it is properly understood uh, to be seen. And the shock wave is divided by, that's the divided side, by the omega effect, which equals temperature, which is divided by the cold, which is the element of cold. So when a nuclear bomb is blowing up, the shock wave and the heat and the fire are still going into cold matter. So even that cold surrounding space decides how fast it's going to go and how far it's going to go. And that's the omega effect that makes the bomb stop and makes it shut off. So that'll probably save a lot of lives, you know, uh, in the future, you know, <laughs> if explosions are, I mean, in any explosion, not just in nuclear, you know, and that is the element of cold. And the, the big thing here people can understand is the same thing, which is Alpha equals temperature means the beginning is the same thing that stops an explosion, which is the omega effect, which equals temperature divided by cold, you know. And they're both cold. 
So the same thing that makes a bomb is the same thing that stops a bomb, you know. It's very a beautiful thing to understand, you know. Uh, but I won't go into that. That's I didn't even write it. It's secret parts about czar bombas and stuff, you know. But I study this and like to write about it. But I love to know these equations because uh, my goal is to make a very fast and very good uh, propulsion to go to space through antimatter and many, many things. So, so that's like... That's like one equation. Uh, many more will be shown in future videos and everything. And in English uh, to be just all my books I wrote in in my language. But uh, now you see it was a very it would have been a much better idea to write them down in to write them down in in actually English. But but that will be in future videos, of course, as well. So that's all for this video and. Hope people could understand. This was actually very uh, the important part that we that we that it is understood that all these atoms are in part enriched, and this is the most enriched, you know. And uh, and uh, that is how nature works. People see nature. Oh, it's a planet. It's this and that. Nature is a quantum realm factory that makes atoms, makes food, makes medicine, makes a whole lot of beautiful things. And then if we know that quantum realm factory and how it works, we would have the power of uh, like, like huge power that people live long, live healthy, uh, they live for hundreds of years, thousands of years even. Uh, yeah, people won't believe that, but really through the physics, if it is understood, uh, one observes that it's really possible and everything. So, and people have been destroying nature, you know, for the past, for the past thousands of years, you know. But once one understands the beauty of it, of course in our day and age there are protected places, protected forests, but in the past it wasn't like that. People who saw nature just to make money or, or get food or something. But once it is observed through physics and correct physics and mathematically, it is very, very beautiful and can lead to very beautiful things as well. So that's all for today's video. And the future videos will follow.